Hello again, this is Jordan here for another edition of the Book Knowledge Share. I really appreciate you being here, so thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to learn a little bit about another book. This week I'm going to be sharing with you an interesting book. Uh, it's written by Dr. Henry Marsh, and it's called Do No Harm. It was recommended through the New York Times. They got a reading list, and... I thought I would check it out. It, it sounded really interesting. So Dr. Henry Marsh, he is a neuroscientist or a neurosurgeon, I should say, out in London, the UK. A really interesting guy, pretty smart guy. Obviously, you got to be uh, pretty good at what you do to make it all the way up to that specific field within medicine. So I thought I'd read it. It's more or less an autobiography on things that have gone well and things that have not gone so well. And there's a lot of really interesting takeaways from this book, both from, you know, a business aspect, but also from a leadership aspect and also from a life lessons aspect. So a few things that I got from this book are, uh, first of all, one of the things he says is that surgery is the easy part. It's the making the decision to have that surgery. That's the hard part. I think this is really interesting in that, a lot of times in life, particularly in business or even when we're trying to make other decisions, whether it's a life decision or, or not, is that a lot of times the hardest part of it is actually the deciding to do it or not. For example, if you're going to, if you have two or three different job offers, which one are you going to take? That's the hardest decision. The actual saying yes or actually going and doing the job and doing the work, that's so much isn't quite the hard part and I, I think it's kind of interesting as you think about planning and creating business strategy or even as you start planning your life and starting to think about what you want to do next the hard part is actually making that decision and executing on it and I, I think this you know for myself when I made the change from music to marketing that decision to actually do that that was the hardest part once I actually made that happen the rest sort of fell into place so I think the takeaway is that don't be afraid to make a decision. Bring as much information into that decision as you can. And then make that decision and go execute. Go make it happen. All right? So, second thing that I got from this book is that in the early parts of your career, try a lot of different things to find your vocation. In the book, Dr. Marcy tried a whole bunch of different things within medicine. He was like a, a porter at a hospital for a while. Uh, he did a bunch of other, you know, medically related jobs throughout his career. And through that, he was able to see a neurosurgery in person. And that's really what encouraged him. That's really made him want to become a neurosurgeon. And if he didn't try all these different things, he might not have found that vocation, that thing that he really loved and really enjoyed and really had success at doing later on. So experiment a little bit. Try some different things. Don't be afraid to move around a little bit, particularly early on in your career. The third thing that I got from this is that daily rituals are, they are uh, comforting. They're very comforting when you have these daily rituals. You get used to them. You're like, when that daily ritual happens, you know the rest of the day it's going to feel good, right? For me, I, you know, I make my bed every day. As sad as that sounds, I make my bed every day. But you know what? I get that task done. And at the end of the day, I know I've done something great. I start off with success by accomplishing a very simple task, doing my bed. And at the end of the day, I get to come home and I look at my bed and I'm like, hey, I accomplished something today. Even if nothing else went well. Well, just that daily ritual of making my bed makes me feel better. makes me a little bit more comforting and it makes me feel like the rest of the day is going to be something. So try to find ways to create daily rituals. Maybe that's a tea in the morning. Maybe that's a certain breakfast. Maybe you talk to your mother every Thursday. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> that might not be a great case. You want to do something on a daily basis. So try to find some ritual. Create some rituals in your life. Create a little bit of uh, momentum. And that'll really go a long way for you. And finally, the last point that I got out of this book. And I thought this was really uh, comforting. I thought it was also something that was um, intriguing and it was something that really struck me from a life lessons perspective and the quote is really there would be less suffering 
if we didn't cling so tightly to life. And I thought it was such an interesting quote from the book and that, you know, a lot of times we want to try and prolong life and we say, you know what, let's have that brain surgery or let's have that, you know, surgery that might have a one or two percent chance of prolonging life for another two weeks, three weeks, a month or whatever it is. When that person's going to be, you know, suffering through those two, three, four, five weeks of life, what's the benefit of it, right? Um, so I, I think on the, the flip side of it is also to remember that, you know, life is precious. Life is something that happens and it happens fast and you're not going to be around forever. So I, I think that really reminds me of the Buddhist thing that, um, you know, life is impermanent always changing and you know we're not going to be around for a long time so make the most of it make the most of everything you do and really you know be willing to take some risk be willing to jump out of your comfort zone from time to time because you know what life really is precious you got to live it to your fullest and go with it go with the flow so there you guys go check out the book if you're interested in some of those life lessons dr henry marsh and the book is called Do No Harm. I think you should check it out. And until next time, there are a couple more books coming up. Just thought I'd let you know. Going to be covering The Cuckoo Calling shortly by Robert Galbraith. Another Robert Galbraith book. And this one here, Food for Fitness. I'll be covering that shortly. As some of you know, I'm a very active person. And love to dig into food and nutrition and all that kind of stuff. So I want to share some of that knowledge with you as well. In the meantime... There's a little subscribe button down at the bottom of the viewer down there. Hit that thing if you want to see some more of these videos. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And create some comments. Give me some comments. Let me know what you think of these book knowledge shares. Let me know what books you want to see in the future. And as well, don't forget to let me know what you saw of the book if you read it. What are some of the takeaways that you've gotten from that book? So until next time. Have yourself a great week. This is Jordan signing off. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.